Welcome to the Paper Call Coaching Call. My name is Chris Winters, and today is January 17th, Friday in the States. And I can't believe how quickly we're already full fledged into the third week of the first year, and time just, just flies by here. Um, we've got. Uh, We've got some good questions here, but we don't have the normal amount of questions, so we're going to have a lot more room for towards the end when I get through the questions for some uh, live questions and answers, and so get those ready if, you, if you've got some on here. I want to try to table the majority of the questions. We're having a webinar tomorrow at 5 o'clock. You're all welcome to join that, by the way, um, and uh, it's all going to be about private blog networks set them up we're gonna there, there is some training that i provided in the members area this is going to take it a step further okay so that's all available to uh the uh, valued members of our paper call ninja uh, folks there so we'll try to table those questions there was a couple that kind of got slipped in and mixed in so that's fine but i want to really want to leave those for uh tomorrow and we'll just make it a pure blog network private blog network backlinking uh, webinar on the end of it. What I want to start off with today is I want to start off with something that um, this is, uh, you're going to start seeing more and more of this. And this right here, this is a, I'll, I'll put these links, I'll, I'll have these links both below uh, in the uh, members area and the replay, but I'll also throw them in the uh, chat box here too, if, if you want to check them out. Uh, before we part ways today, but this right here, this is this is a blog on here. This is the eight thousand dollar mistake all bloggers should be aware of on here. And basically, what happened is that this particular company writes content and manages blogs for a lot of uh, companies out there, and they're very careful. They don't. Uh, they're very aware of copyright laws. Um, they they all have budgets for images to go out and purchase images, not copy them off of Google images and uh, basically they got slapped with an eight thousand uh, dollar lawsuit now normally uh, normally what normally happens in the past is that is that you get a a, 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 a cease and desist letter and you just remove it and you know you say you're sorry you'll never do it again and then that's it but that's not happening today what's happening today is uh, these attorneys are actually going after these people here um, and they ended up uh, getting an attorney and reducing it down from an eight thousand dollar fine to a three thousand dollar fine and this was basically the image right here that they use okay um, and they, they thought they were using it in the proper format they weren't trying to to, to, to steal it or anything on here. I'm going to be giving you some more updates on this. And exactly, I'm going to be consulting with my attorney on exactly how uh, I want to make sure I want to guard myself from any of this. Because what's happening here is <clears throat> is this copyright trolls on here, and uh, basically the company that's th th that's doing this on here is uh, a, a law firm, but that's run by Randy Taylor. And basically, what happens is is these guys are these guys are trolls. They, they actually have a software built that goes out and actually f actively seeks these copyright infringements of, of images. And, uh, and they're, they'll go to the full extent of law. Now, um, a, a good friend of mine that probably all of you know, but he'll re remain anonymous, this morning he got one of these letters uh, from this exact law firm and it was in there and they're asking for fifty thousand dollars not eight thousand um, and so it's really kind of scary stuff so uh, i'll give you some more insights about what we're going to do and how we're going to move forward with this uh, and and this is this is the attorney i use by the way he's great um and he's located in arizona um he's just he, he 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 makes his own sites if you can't tell it's kind of looks a little homemade he makes his own sites he does his own seo he understands seo um i know a lot of people in the industry that uh, have used him i've used him before and he's really inexpensive to start out with so if you're like you have questions and you want to do like a half an hour skype uh, con uh, consultation. Uh, I did an hour with him uh, in 2013, not too long ago, and it was like 140 bucks, but it was worth, you know, 20 times that, if not 100 times that, and uh, stuff. And he and he gets internet marketing. Both he does it, and he also uh, supports people with it there. So. I'll put those links in the, in the chat box there. And also, guys, I'll keep you guys posted about how we're going to handle this stuff. 
uh, we don't go out and copy in images. And as you, you, you've all been through the course, you know, I have you go out, you want to, you want to buy the images that you've got on your homepage and stuff like this. But what I'm worried about is, is because these are literally just attorneys out there, uh, exploiting people and they've got software just to go out and actively find it and look for cases. These are not situations where bloggers are going, Oh, uh, this, this guy over here, uh, this site over here, uh, ripped off my stuff and, and now they go and contact a lawyer. That's not the way this, these cases are happening. These lawyers are actively going out and seeking it. And what happens is the people just get scared. Um, and they end up uh, more times than not just settling out of, out of court for an enormous amount of money, thousands of dollars. Um, and that's just a sad truth. And I think we're going to be seeing more and more of this, unfortunately, um, as we move forward. Uh, in the U.S., we've got over, oh, I think it's over 3 million uh, attorneys, way too many more attorneys per population, per person in, 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 the, in, in the population here in the United States than anywhere else in the world. And, uh, you know, they, they're opportunists and they're the ones who actually wrote the laws too, by the way, for this, they helped write it and it's in their favor. So anyways, I'll follow up more with that. Um, let me get into the slides here. Oh, I want to share this one thing. And, and when I share this, I'm not trying to impress on anybody. I just, uh, now's really the time if you haven't kind of buckled down and gotten your goals clear about what you're going to be doing this year and, and, and really focusing in on honing on. Uh, so that this time next year, or hopefully even sooner, uh, you you're you're in a place where you want to be. Right? We're all in one place, and all of us have something in common. And that common thread is that we're all in, in in a particular place in our lives right now, and we all would like to improve it. And we may have different definitions of how we do that, but we all have that common thread in place. Um, and so, uh, this right here, this is this is one niche. Uh, last year, uh, when the new year started, uh, there was a new type of niche that I wanted to go after. And so this is just one account for one niche on here. And so we're looking for this year to take this niche and actually quadruple it. And it's just one niche in the uh, offline world. It's, it's not, it's, it's the paper call model, all that kind of business. Uh, but I don't share it <laughs> like I do, like my mobile mechanic sites and stuff, which those are just becoming flooded with copycats that come in. So, but anyways, it's right here. And, and we've, uh, uh, and, and, and this is just something that, this is a snapshot that I pulled off of a, one of the many PayPal accounts that I have. And this was dedicated just to this particular niche. And we brought in for the year 2013, uh, $974,156.23. So almost a million dollars. Uh, that was our goal was to bring in a million dollars. Uh, we came sh shy of that uh, by about $26,000, but uh, this year, there's no doubt where our goal is, is to triple that one niche. We've, we, we've, we've learned it. Now we can really start expanding it. And we're looking to expand it out. And we have more room in the, in the States to expand it out. And we're going to expand out in, in Canada and also in uh, UK. And that also brings me another thing that I wanted to update people up. We've been working for the past six months behind the scenes um, with our programmer and we will have we are completely revamping the entire call zoo backbone and system with just tons of improvements um we've listened to a lot of what you guys have and gals have said out there uh one of the things that a lot of people said and we have this challenge too in our business is uh is you can come at and, and this particular model works very well i mean you, you can come at you can offer a free seven day trial okay uh get the foot in the door it's warm the barriers of entry are, are, are very low you pre-qualify the client make sure that you know they're they get advertising and they're going to appreciate this and that you know you want to keep them long term not just tire kickers for a few week and then later um and then after that the way the system's set up right now is that is that we is is that we pay they pay after they've used the service for a week okay and uh, we've got texting features to text them out. They're going to get emails. Uh, but sometimes some clients, if you don't set them up right in the expectation in the beginning, they can, uh, you can tend to kind of have to spend a little bit of time chasing them down. It doesn't always happen with all clients. It really sets up their, it really depends on how you set up the relationship in the beginning. So the way we're going to have it set up in the new call center or, or the new call zoo, the updated one, is you'll have the option for clients to either A, bill weekly 
um, and and bill as they go. So you know, if they do a whole week, then they get a bill automated just like it does right now, and you you send out a text blast. But now we can add. Uh, you know, maybe it's two or three business owners, so you want to text blast to two or three, let them know that the billing's ready, and also email out and reminders. Um, but now we're going to do it so that so that you can set them up uh, clients differently. You can set them up to prepay, and and you can set up the different amounts. So you have a PayPal account, they just pay. You know, say you want to de- deposit five hundred bucks, they deposit five hundred bucks in there, and then every week. When they get the billing, that's deducted from their $500. Then uh, you can determine what the threshold is going to be when they start getting uh, warning emails and texts out that, that they need to uh, basically top up their account. So maybe you might want to set that at $100, um, and then they need to top it up, and you can give them options to uh, do that. That way you're not chasing them. Okay. Um, so those things will be coming. We're, we'll, we'll have all the numbers around the world um, available. Um and then uh, one feature that uh, I personally have not had a need for, but there's been a lot of requests for it. I think because it sounds kind of cool, but I just have not seen a need for it. But there's a request for it and, and enough of it that, hey, even just because I don't see a need for it and I haven't done it doesn't mean someone else couldn't. So I'll be the first to admit I don't know it all. I don't, I don't want to. Uh, I'm an amateur and I want to stay that way. But um, So we're going to be doing... Uh, where you can come up and not a this kind of round robin feature, uh, although we're going to have that, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of people using it. But the program is very similar to what our program is doing anyway. So I said just do the round robin for people who might find a need for it. But really, what we're going to do is is um, is uh, multiple calls out, so it just rings out at all the numbers. So let's say um, this is the kind of example I think it would work well for. Um, I don't see it happening in a lot of places, but anyways, um, in a, in a lot of niches, just from my experience, but let's say you've got a area that had a, um, really bad hailstorm. Okay. And you just follow the hailstorms around the country. Okay? And, and there are a lot of hailstorms, by the way. So you follow the hailstorms around and cars get damages, roofs get damaged. And this is all insurance stuff coming in and, and covering it. And so the contractors swoop down and then they drive in from other states and uh, that would be a, a you know that would be a, a situation where um, you would be driving those leads, um, and uh, you would have too many leads for a single contractor for sure in in a situation like that. Um, and that way you'd be able to uh, sign up you know four or five of them, and when a lead comes in, it rings, and whoever picks up the phone gets it. Or you can do the round robin one at a time. But the problem with the round robin um, is that. Uh, when people don't answer the phone, um, and then it's kind of a waste of call. Even if you charge them, it's just kind of a waste of call. Um, so you want people who want to go after them and answer the phone calls. A um, ton of other stuff we'll be doing there. Uh, really fancy uh, white labeling, so it's more customized. And then your clients can also come in, and uh, they have a lot more features too. Anyway, that's all stuff's coming around the corner. We're, we're literally working on that every day five days a week, putting in 40, 50 hours, and we have been for the past six months. So um, anyways, okay, so let's go back to these uh, the slides. We'll get into the questions. We don't have a whole lot of questions today, so we'll have a lot of room for uh, extra questions towards the end here. But let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so I want to emulate, perhaps on a smaller scale, uh, what Chris did in the first 30, 60, and 90 days of his paper call career um, really just needs some guidance on here um, I agree with your hire first uh, VA as soon as possible and right now uh, number one I've hired a full-time VA to build the sites um, I hired a part-time sales pro to sell the sites um, on that end of it and if you're on the call right now I'd be just kind of curious when you hired a, a part-time sales pro was that somebody that you hired off of Elance and on the last coaching call we went over uh, how you can go there and find some good Elance people. Now, they're going to be more expensive, but I think you're going to get what you pay for, and you get an English-speaking person who has experience. They speak with authority. They they get sales. You know, you might pay them 20 25 bucks an hour, or what I had suggested earlier. If they're asking for 20 an hour, offer them 12 bucks an hour plus a, an incentive to close the deal so they can actually make more than 20 bucks an hour. Some of them will go for it. Some of them won't. Um, but at the end of the day, 
uh, you would only really need to hire them for maybe a couple of times per week, if not, you know, if not just two or three days, um, maybe just outright in the beginning and maybe not have need to have a need to hire them, uh, you know, for another three more weeks or so. Um, and uh, we'll scale up with those funds. Okay, so um, I wish that my first 30, 60, and 90 days were like, uh, you know, this kind of linear uh you know, bar graph where it's our, our, our graph where it's kind of looks like a kind of a nice, even smooth stair step going up. Um, that is just, uh, unfortunately that's not the case at all. Um, so I did not have this, uh, linear kind of, uh, system going out there where, where, was, where I was planned out. Uh, I was, let's see if I can draw it on here. If it'll let me out. So a lot of times, you know, we'd like to think that it kind of goes a nice linear over time and you kind of grow like this, but that's not at all what happened. It probably looks more like this. I hate to burst anybody's bubble and then probably coming up here and I'm probably going to cycle it in something like this again and then back up. This is probably where I am right now and there's going to be, you know, these are these are learning curves, right? You Every time you expand and grow, you go through different growing pains on here. So that's... I wish it was like that, but it it uh, it was not. So, but let me do my best to kind of. Uh, I, I I I think it's a great question. So, really, the best way I think I can answer it is in retrospect. If I was going to start all over again, ideally, what would my thirty, sixty, and ninety days um, um, look like on here? Uh, well, for the first thirty days, what I'd focus on is really understanding your business. And the business model, when you look at it, is really simple, okay? Um, I know there's a lot of little moving parts, but if you just kind of step away from the, from the technical stuff, like the cloning the sites and the, and the uh, backlinking and the SEO and all that kind of stuff, it's really just basic. You're, you're building uh, a property, and, and the property could be a, a combination or all the above of a site you own, a website you own, uh, a video, could be a citation, um, all three, and you're trying to get those to rank for for keywords, right? So that's just that that part of it is really kind of a grind. Uh, you know, once you've set up a site and you've set up maybe a video and maybe you've chosen one citation. And for those of you who maybe not know, in Pint with citation is it'd be like a, a Yellow Pages, um, a, a, a Yelp, um, uh, and and then optimizing one of those and then sending some backlinks at it. And those will actually rise up pretty darn fast. So, so the idea would be, you know, you've, 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 you've got a, your own site, uh, you've got a, a video up ranking, and you've also got a citation. So, so you're owning three positions somewhere on page one. Okay. Um, so I would spend the first 30 days um, understanding all the working parts and the mechanical parts that take place. Uh, on that, you know, first you've done your um, uh, research for your niche, okay? And I would probably, I, I, I would keep that, that, that that's something I'm going to do, okay? I, 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 that's not something I'm going to hand off to somebody else, although I could, okay? I'm, I'm just not ready for it, and I would suggest for a while at least you, you do that, because that's kind of high-level stuff. You're the one that's going to pick out the niche, Um Walk through, no matter how painful it is, walk through, go through the learning curve of what it's going to take to open up a site. You know, those of you who have who uh, exercise and use our uh, support staff, which is there just for you guys and gals, okay? So they really are. Um, and I invest a lot of money and time and training in them. And I do review over uh, at least 40% of the tickets. I'm the one who actually closes them out. They don't get closed out by anybody else. I'm the one who closes them out. So I'm the one who reviews them over. Uh, if I see something I don't like, it's a training opportunity, and then we, you'll probably get a second response back. So uh, we do put a lot of effort into that because it's. I think it's important, and we're always constantly striving to improve that. Um, so I would I would go through that first 30 days, get pick a niche, get a site or two up or maybe three. Okay. So kind of get used to what that process is. You, you, you're not trying to become an expert at it. You're just trying to become knowledgeable enough with it, uh, such that you understand what it takes to do that, what you understand, pick a niche, put the content on there. Uh, and, and, and as you're doing that process, 
start thinking to yourself, how would I how would I teach someone else how to do this? Okay, because when you're able to teach someone else how to do it, that's really when you become the expert. Okay, so you learn it, you do it, and you teach it, and now you're the PhD, you're the expert. And so as you're going through the process, you're thinking about, okay, how, uh, what kind of person would I need to be able to do this skill set and, and do this and, and th- these particular tasks here? And when you look at it from that perspective, you really need somebody who is um, – who knows their way around a just most importantly follows directions. Okay. Follows directions, uh, is, uh, uh, hard worker, uh, there on time. It's not one of these people who, you know, is just like has deaths in the family all the time and, and, and is, and who's sick all the time. And all of a sudden it's all these emergencies and dramas coming up in their life. And those of you who have hired people before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, those are not the people that you want. Uh, you want just hardworking, dedicated people there and that are very trainable and, and smart, have a good command of the English language, especially written, not necessarily verbal, but it's nice, but the written is really important um, and knows their way inside of, inside of uh, uh, WordPress, you know, inside and out. And, and if they're going to know that well, you know, then, then they have no problems with, you know, hosting and, and, you know, installing sites on different hosting and stuff like this. Um, and they're going to know some kind of um, CSS and P, PHP so they can do some, some minor changes to your site if you want to kind of customize it a little bit. They should have, uh, be able to use uh, some, some type or some version of some type of photo editing. Uh, preferably they've got... Um, a, uh, Photoshop, at least the most basic kind, um, and so they're able to do some of that stuff for you. Um, and that's really all that they need to know at that point. And that one person right there could now just start making and producing and duplicating your sites. They could be actually going out and getting the content, uh, the content for the posts. If you've got uh, SEO Zen, you can just be doing the RSS feeds off of that. Um, and uh, or you can bring content out by going out by going to foreign sites, bringing them in. You could you could do that as well. And I show that in the course. Um, the home pages you really want to be kind of in charge of. Okay, you could have someone else write it if you wanted to, but you'd be the one that'd want to, you know, do the final draft of it. Um, but it's pretty basic at that point. Now we're just duplicating and we're doing some backlinks. Um, as far as with um, you know, like for me with my backlinks, um, I, for, for my private blog networks, um, I, the, the guidelines are very clear, so I don't even shop for them. Okay. I don't, I don't shop for them. They just, I have somebody who goes in, shops for them, buys them. Um, they know to go back and check in five to seven days, my go, go daddy account. And I give them full access to all that stuff. I know some people get afraid to, I, I, I don't, you know, I pay my people well, I don't think they're going to screw me over. So um, I trust them. Um, and they set it up and they, and they know exactly how to set it up. All It's all laid out. It's just instructions on how they do it. Um, so all that's automated. Um, and then I've got a um, uh, salesperson. So they're out there and they're kind of also a, a, a man, you know, an account manager too. Um, so you could, you could realistically set that up in a team of two People by the end of 90 days, I think would be a real, real, uh, realistic goal. Um, somebody who does more of the uh, 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 setting up the sites, the on-page, the off-page SEO, and then having a um, a salesperson slash customer representative person that, that goes in there. And you could do that in in 30, 60, 90 days, no problem. You just stick it and you just go through it. As long as you stay focused, that's the, that's the thing. You just gotta, you just gotta keep moving forward, move forward. You're gonna get obstacles. That's okay. Again, remember the graph I made earlier. It's, there's not this linear kind of graph everyone like to think there is. It, but just reality is not like that. But you, but no matter how many zigzags you take, as long as you just you're still moving in the right direction, you are overall the graph is going to be an upward on that end of it. So, um, so I hope that helps out. Um, one of the, that I've talked about this before, but it's, it's worth mentioning is that you're really taking off the entrepreneur hat. Although, you know, that's, that has to be a part of you, but you're taking the entrepreneur hat off more often in this kind of transition. When you start hiring people, 
because you've now got to come become more of a project manager. So now you're managing these people's work days and these people's work days is extremely important, especially when you're first starting out, because if you just got one person, uh, their performance can almost literally make you or break you or they can really harm you or slow you down, I should say. Um, so you want to make sure that you're really giving them clear objections about what they're doing, what they should be doing for that particular day. Check in, check up on them. I, for, for me, I just, I got real basic. I'm going to start looking into stuff like base camp and some other things. because so my team is getting larger and we have larger goals and things that we want to do. So I need better tools to do that. But up to this point, I've just used, um, Dropbox and, and Skype. And there's a set time you come to work. There's a set time for lunch and there's a set time that you're done with work. And there's none of this, uh, oh, I got to, you know, run and do these errands during the day and stuff. Like, no, this is like a real nine to five. You're in a building, even though it's a virtual job. You need to be here between those times. Yeah. Um, all righty. Good questions here. Let me move on to the next one here. Okay, could you please give us the additional hosting company that you have found besides the host nine? Okay, so since somebody asked for this, I don't want, I don't want anybody to wait for it. Um, and let me get these links out here. I'll also have them in the recording, but I'll just, I'll just throw all these out because some of these I did earlier. And yeah, I'll just throw all these out. These will also be in the, I'll, I'll reference some of these ones later in the call. Um, this post was in the chat box for now and send to all. And uh, one of them is this right here, which is, I'll go to the site right now. I've already had it pulled up. Uh, bu -bu 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 oh, yeah, this is it right here. Um, and again, the link is in the chat box. Make sure that you have the full length here. This is not an affiliate link or anything like that. Uh, but but you, you don't just want to go to... Uh, a turnkeyinternet.net, but you want to do the full URL here so that you get this price on here. So basically the price is, is $6.24 a month and you get 10 different IP addresses, okay? And and unlimited domains that you could do that. So <clears throat> Um, we, you know, we've got the host nine solution and, you know, you, you can go to, um, hidemysites.com and it's just a free sign up. It's a free course that I put out there <clears throat> and I, I show you how to get a reseller account through there. I know a lot of you have done that and it works out great. You can get easily over time and get 200, 100, 200, uh, different IP addresses, um, for really cheap coming up to around 25 cents a piece. This is, this is a little more expensive as far as if you compare the two, but if you compare what's available out there in the marketplace, this is a really good deal. <coughs> so this is this would be a great mini blog to start out with. Ten different unique IP addresses, six bucks total, right? Uh, so what is that, about 75 cents, 60, 60, 60 cents a piece, say 60, 65 cents a piece. Um, and you're really not going to get a better deal than that any, anywhere else so and I think that's a it's pretty good and, and and this company right here is not primarily a SEO hosting company excuse me where those tend to be in my opinion I'm backing away from anything that's like hey we cater just to SEO hosting which means we, we're catering primarily to um, people who create blog networks and uh, pretty easy to track those down. So um, it's a good one. You don't need to do any, you know, there's nothing complicated about this. There's a little more steps. Uh, and it's quite frankly, it's, it's a much better deal to go with host nine, but this is a great way to start. Okay. It's a great way to, uh, man, 10, five sites is great to start with a blog network. I, I, a lot of people just need three or four. You'll be fine. And if you had 10, that's a pretty darn good private blog network. So anyways, uh, enough of that. Let me move on to the other questions that the person right here. Uh, so number two, is there a process or a certain way that you search to find good hosting companies that are good for private blog networks? Um, I think I've got two pretty good sources right now. Uh, like I said earlier, I try to avoid the ones that are obviously for people who want to create private blog networks. Really easy to find out who that is because the root name server, even if you change the name server, then the name server is going to have, they can still, somebody could still identify it by uh, a, a small cluster of 
uh, IP addresses for the name servers, even though you could, you know, you can change the name of it to your domain or something on the front. Um, it'd be pretty easy for somebody if they wanted to, to say, okay, we'll just find out what their four or five or eight domains, um, name servers are for, you know, all of their private, all of their different IP addresses and they could track them all down and then they can just, someone could just manually go through all of them and go, oh, this is obviously a, a, or a could, if somebody didn't set up their, um, private blog network site up correctly could come through and just say hey these are obviously let's just de-index these so i try to i i would recommend avoiding those and i think between what we've got here uh which is just easy this is a much more turnkey turnkey situation and look for you know 12 bucks a month you get 20 all right uh 40 for 19 dollars a month so you know that's not bad at all that's, that's some pretty darn good pricing and 24 bucks for 60 and you compare that to, and, and you know, you could start out at the 10, right? You get more, you work your way up. 60 private blog networks is a lot. It's a lot of links. So uh, it, it, it would take most people quite a while to get up there. And you may not even need to. I mean, depending on your niche. So it's a pretty good alternative. And Host 9 is obviously going to be cheaper. Say Host 9 for 29 or 25 bucks a month, basically, you... Um, you can get a hundred, but there's a little bit more, you know, there's a little bit more of a learning curve in the beginning, but once you got it, you got it because you're setting up as a reseller and, 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 and here you're not. So, and the next question here is if you are linking to a money site from a blog network, could you give an example of the anchor text used for the first five links that you send in there okay so if i got five posts i got uh, i'm going to put one anchor text going out of each post uh and that particular blog network is only going to point to a site one time i might bend that rule and if i'm going to point it to a site a second time it's going to go to an inner page not the the uh, home page we're going to go extremely extremely non-spammy links meaning i would out of those five i would do one with your main keyword, and I would remove the city name even. <laughs> so instead of, you know, if, it's, if, it's, if it's Austin Plumbers, I would just put Plumbers. And then the rest of the four keywords, I would be doing the the uh, URL. You can do the URL a couple of different ways. Um, I'd be doing click here. I'd be like, check out these guys here. If you, you know, have a drainage problem, you, know, you need to get something unplugged, that's the way you want to do it. Google is super, super hypersensitive to throwing a lot of anchor text. That's the way it used to be. It's not that way anymore. Google will figure out, based on your content, what your site is about and where it should show up, okay? So for new money sites, are you sending any links before you send to your net um, networks? And uh, if so, about how many? Um, the experiment we just ran, and I, I shared with you on the call, but I didn't share the sites. So I'm, I'm gonna, I, have to, I have to stop doing that. I'm just, it's just, um, I share a niche and there's unbelievable all of a sudden I look one day and there's four or five other sites that look really closely to mine on page one anyways uh, so we took those uh, I had I think it was five sites five or six and uh, some of them were on page four some on page two some bottom of page one and uh, we just I, I did I did five uh, links to each one from five different private blog networks uh, and I did that over the course of just a couple of days. Okay. And that seemed to be enough. There's not, they're still floating upwards with no, um, no additional links uh, now. And, and none of them have, have gone backwards. All right. On the topic of videos, have you ever seen them get penalized for perhaps over optimization in the form of anchor text where all you needed to do was add a few naked URLs or long tail terms similar to the website. I have a few stubborn videos and that's probably the next thing I'll try. By the way, I'm only using uh, network links on these videos so it is like 10 times exact anchor text only. For the most part, nothing automated and not hundreds of links and the vast majority of the info out there implies that you can go to town on anchor text 
uh, and the movement with no problems. I that's been my experience is that with videos, the way it, the current state of the videos has kind of almost always been this way. You can really toss quite a bit of backlinks at it, and you can get kind of crazy with the anchor text. Um, I would vary the anchor text uh, to you know your main keywords. Uh, it's already going to be in the title, and you're going to have it down in, in the uh, in, in the description as well with some others. Um, I wouldn't go crazy with that, but I don't think you could hurt it right now um, doing it. But I would I would be a little bit more conservative. And if I was to do a, a lot of backlinks, I would be doing some more light and somatic terms, terms that are you know closely related, but not too close, but within that general theme. So, for example, if for a plumber, if I was going after you know Austin plumbers, or plumbing, uh, or, uh, yeah, plumber Austin, um, I might come in and do an article about how our plumbers are doing, you know, a sprinkler system or how to uh, how to safe uh, how to know when your hot water heater needs to be replaced stuff like this these are the kind of things that google algorithm is picking up on going oh okay yeah these guys are really all about um and having a good content they're they're these guys are real legit plumbers rather than every article as it was in the past you got some kind of anchor text coming back to it just really stuffing it and it's just in your face that this is you know plumbers in you know, Austin, and then Plumbers, Austin, Texas, TX, and, then, and all, all those kind of variations. It's just, it's just it's just too much. Okay, on the business end of things, how strict or friendly are you with your staff? Uh, I have a habit of being too friendly and forgiving sometimes, and then I get walked all over by the staff. Do you joke with them, uh, work on a first-name basis? Is all the communication text through Skype and email, or is it what actual phone calls? Does your project manager hire and fire, or do you handle that? Um, okay, great questions. Um, you, my philosophy, and again, I'm, I'm not the best at it, no, you know, it, not by any means, but understand that your ability to grow moving forward is going to be directly proportioned to uh, the talent on your team and uh, their dedication towards the mission of the company and and you want to make sure that you're seeing eye to eye to that okay so that's really really important um so i i think you know i've made that mistake too i think when you're first starting out you want to be you know kind of friendly like a friend and stuff like that that's 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 not what they need okay uh, they need clear direction they want leadership and people like strong leadership and they like to be told what to do um, if you're a parent, uh, you, that same analogy would be true with, 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 with kids. Um, I think if you try to be, you know, too much of a friend of them, they tend to lose respect. And, uh, again, kids like adults, they want good, strong leadership. Uh, and they, and they like to be told what to do. Now there's a, now there's a method to tell people what to do that, that empowers them. Um, I'll give a child example, and we can just relate that right over to a um, work scenario on this end of it. Um, so, and instead of saying to my kids, you know, uh, eight, you, you know, it's, it's nine thirty, you got to go brush your teeth. And 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 instead of saying that, we we go in and we and and we give them a a option, so they get to choose what they want to do. But it, but it's both the end result. Okay, so um, you guys can go floss your teeth right now, or you can or you can brush them, or you can brush them first, and then you can floss them afterwards. Which would you like to do? Or we can go. Uh, sometimes we play like a little hand. You know, we we like to play cards, so so we might play you know cards that you know the whole even my five year old can play. So it's all a family thing. So would you guys like to play cards first or brush your teeth? Or do you want to brush your teeth after we play cards? See, it's that's a lot more you know friendlier than than the than the direct. But yes, but but yet it's firm. You're you're providing the leadership. You're providing the options, and they're going to get both done anyways, right? So you, so you do the same thing in here. I don't get jokey jokey. I don't get friendly friendly. I'm I'm real stern, and I can get really really nasty uh, if 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 somebody um, if if I sense this, you know, as long as I'm giving the direction and it's totally clear 
what's to be done. And you know, I've given a friendly warning. If it happens again, I'm, I'm really come down hard. Okay. I'm not going to be a friendly person to be around. I'm the same way with my kids. Okay. I don't think there's anything. I, I don't think there's anything. There, there's no such thing as bad kids in, in my opinion. All kids are, are direct roadmap right back to their parents. Okay. I, I just think there's bad parents. I don't think there's anything as a bad child. I think it's bad parody and that's it. Um, and uh, same with my kids. You know, you know, my kids are happy. They're go lucky. Uh, but people always comment when, when, when we're in public uh, how well behaved they all are. Okay. There's none of this. Oh, come here, John. Hey, John, be quiet. I'll sit down. No, it's sit down. I mean, I mean you're sitting down. Okay. Or... We're in public. You need to behave yourself while you're representing the family. Okay, same thing here with uh, with people that you employ. Now, uh, I'm not pretending like I know everything. I'm learning as I go along. I've made a ton of mistakes, but currently, that's I guess my uh, my, my current and evolution of how far I've evolved as a manager and as a leader in in my company. Um, and you'll find your own style as well, but. It's always good to kind of study and see how other people do it. Um, Steve Jobs was notorious for, man, the project. It was like, you know, hey, I'm, you know, there was no mercy. It was like, we got to get this project done. Uh, you, know, it, you know, it's a six-month project, and uh, we're keeping up on four months. I'm sorry, but, you know, we're going to have to cap out here over the weekend. Tell your spouses, tell your kids you're not coming home tonight. And it was just that, it was just that, it was just hardcore uh, on that. So, alrighty. Um, Is it possible to set up uh, proper silo structures on a large authority site for a client? Absolutely. Such as a health site with various health conditions. Again, Absolutely. Um, so the example here would be authoritysite.com health condition number one, authoritysite.com health condition number two, etc. Okay, or possibly health condition uh, one and then a subdomain. I, I wouldn't do the subdomains, I would do the first option up there to where you have pages. So, so yeah, you would have you know health condition number one, um. You know, diabetes, health condition number two, heart disease, right? It belongs on a some type of health site, right? Uh, but it's two totally different topics and totally different set of keywords that you want to rank for. One would be diabetes, and the other is you know some kind of heart condition or you know, increasing heart condition, um, or ways to prevent um, premature heart conditions. Um, and then you just simply have posts that are going to be uh, supporting each one of those. Okay, so you're going to have posts about different types of, you know, heart conditions, things you can do to prevent it, um, uh, you know, choosing, you know, all natural alternatives and so on and so forth. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, you'd be able to, you know, your uh, Google, you know, I would think of your think of your site as as pages, not necessarily an entire site. And that, that, that statement's not, you know, black and white, but. I, I think it's good to think about uh, particular pages that you're trying to rank. So if you got one page and the health condition is diabetes, that's all the style structures are uh, underneath it pointing to it are going to support that. Uh, let's Google know it's nice, good, and logical, and you're going to rank the top of that silo for various keywords that have to do with diabetes. And then, you know, your, your, your targeted keywords. Okay. Um... Would either of the above examples be able to obtain a high ranking? Uh, yes, both both would. I would I would use the first one. We're using pages instead of um, subdomains, <clears throat> but you could do both. Um, on each health condition, assuming everything is built out correctly, and also using mini box. Yeah, absolutely. I realize that every health condition should have their own site. Well, not necessarily. They don't need to have their own site. You can have a big authority site. And you can have different health conditions on there, and that's perfectly fine. So each, you're, you're, you're ranking pages, not necessarily the entire site. So you can, you know, just like you do a single kind of silo structure, like the mole mechanic is a single silo structure, um, 
but like in computer repair, you might have four or five different silos. So you're really ranking broadly for four or five different broad terms. And the health condition it just could get larger and larger. Okay, so if you had to build a site for a client, would you go with an exact match domain.com.org if they're available, or would you go with an age domain and just theme it out, assuming you can't find a theme related age domain? Great question, by the way. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> that depends. Uh, uh, either, either way would work. Uh, but if I had a choice between an exact match domain, um, and a age domain, you know, um, something that would, you know, kind of fit more what I, I would like, I was maybe like nine years old, have a existing, you know, page rank of at least a one or two, um, have some good trust, uh, backlinks going to it. Uh, never been de indexed, never been banned from, uh, Google AdWords, none of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for the age domain, especially if it's like 10 or 15 bucks or 20 bucks, 25. It's totally going to save me time. And, and, and it's the same theme. That's important. It's, it's the same theme. Um, then, uh, yeah, that, that's going to be a, a better route to go. Um, how soon would you start sending links to a money site, assuming you will be using a uh, private blog network for links? You can start sending. We start sending them right away. Uh, two to three in the uh, uh, first week and uh, a couple others the next week and then kind of sit back and see where it's going from there. But, you know, that, that's a total of five over a two-week period. I mean, over a 14-day period, five different links. That's, I don't know, that's pretty hard to argue that, that would be spammy when, you know, you know, people get in there and get a lot of other links in there a lot, lot faster and, and lower quality. I mean, so... Uh, when theming a out a site, would you go with the most general category instead of the niche? For example, if you had air conditioning repair money site, so an air conditioning repair money site, would you theme out the private blog network to be, say, home repair or home improvement? And would that private blog network link be more powerful if it was niche specific? So like air conditioning repair... On that okay so yeah, that's those are great questions um i would and on something like that uh you can do it a, a couple of different ways one would be to create a kind of local directory site so so that way you could point it at a lot of different type of theme sites now that's not going to be as powerful as if you had a theme site and you know you bought it themed out it was about odd you know it's about plumbing or home repair and now you're going to be pointing it to some home repairs, like some plumbing, some electricians, uh, some roofers, some uh, you know handyman, some pool people. So you can actually go a lot in different niches with kind of a general home repair type site. And if you could buy one that was that, that's always had something to do with home repair or in that genre, um, th that's going to be your best bet. That's going to be really really powerful on that. Um, Okay, I'll get to the chat box here in just a second. Oh, I had two of the same slides there. Okay, so okay, so I wanted to know if you have if you have run into this situation before. I have an age domain uh, that I purchased, and it has the same name as an active site from the old owner's site, except mine is a .com. And the previous owners as a .NET. Interesting. And the previous owner is an attorney. Dun, dun, dun. That's all we need is more attorneys, right? And, and, and uh, people are scared by attorneys, naturally. So you get a letter from attorneys. I'm going to sue you for $8,000 or $50,000 for infringement of this picture. Or, here's, or if you don't give me that domain, you're using my name. Ba, 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 ba. You know. All depends on the attorney, I guess. Um, do you worry that owners may come back and want his or her site back? I have had owners, definitely. Uh, one of the things I like to do is um, ideally, uh, and we're, I'm going to talk a lot more about this on tomorrow's call, but um, I like to choose sites, uh, uh, expired or buy now sites, um, 
that are uh, ideally of the same theme. So I'm going to automate uh, something that was automotive, and I'm going to point it to, I'm going to rebuild it and point it towards automotive type sites. Uh, that's the ideal situation. You can also rebuild it. So you can have a theme, you know, something as generic as possible. And then uh, I'll go over that more tomorrow night and how you can retheme it. Really, in just a couple of days, as a matter of fact. A little bit more work, but you can retheme it. And now you're, now, now Google clearly knows it's an automotive, and you can, you can go from there. Um, so let's see here. I, I'm not, I, I've had owners uh, um, come back to me. And the reason I have is because um, if I can't find a, I don't know, a, a themed out site that kind of fits my criteria and I'm willing to compromise. So if I get a, you know, if I'm looking for automotive and I got an, I got an automotive theme niche that's, you know, nine years old, but it's got a page rank of a zero and it's got some good trusted backlinks to it. I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm going to buy that. Then, then I'm perfectly fine that the, the PR rank is, is, is not there. I can always manipulate that later, but I can't manipulate the age and it's, and I could manipulate the uh, theme and I do that quite a bit, but, um, and sometimes people, so, so I, I will oftentimes shop for like, people's names and their own you know they it's maybe an old blog that they bought a long time ago and they, they just haven't paid attention to it for the past year and then all of a sudden it's gone and they'll contact me and say hey that's my personal blog that's my name i want it back uh, i'm gonna be cool i'm with you know but but if i've invested a, you know if 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 my team is you know i'm obviously gonna charge them what i paid for it I'm going to charge them some of my time and I'm going to charge them for whatever work we've already put in there. Okay. Cause, um, it takes, it takes my team and I think my team could improve on this speed a bit, but it takes my team, uh, 17 hours total. I'll talk a little more about this tomorrow. 17 hours total from buying the domain, setting it up, putting it up the way that I want set up all the plugins that I want in all the content for the whole year. Uh, um, uh, 17 and a half hours per site. Okay. Um, anyways. Okay. So that's the last question there. Let me go into the chat box and, uh, we can just leave this time open here for whatever questions you've got here. I'm just going to kind of randomly go through these. Cool. Yeah, the new ambulance chaser software, exactly, Catherine. It's just, it's really, you know, I mean, we hear about attorneys and how bad they can be and and chasing after you, but um, until you've had it happen to you and, you know, my good friend who is happening to him with a $50,000 letter. It's ridiculous for like two or three photos that were really, they weren't intentionally stolen and then, uh, it's just... Uh, it's it's just trolls going out there software to find that stuff. It's really uh, disgusting, but we've got to fight back. We can't let the little vultures uh, do this. Okay. Because I just got on, but uh, is this what you're having in the network course or is different from what is in the paper called Ninja? Okay, so if you're, John, it's a good question. So if you Everybody here is obviously a uh, paper call ninja, and I've I've added some material in there. I'm going to be going into a lot more detail tomorrow. I'm not selling anything tomorrow. There's no like pitch at the end of it. Okay, so um, in the chat box, the um, the link for to, to sign up will um, will will be there. Um, and if you just want to get a little bit more better understanding or chance to a a ask some more questions, uh, I would suggest that you attend send in your questions and if you can't you can watch the uh replay okay cool 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 let's see here um okay so kevin on here uh on here and kevin's been around for a long time i really appreciate that he asked on here and this is as far as a calls you feature but by the way if 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 you got some good calls you feature some some things that are like this would really solve a problem that's that's what we're trying to look for. I'm not looking for, um, you know, we're trying to solve real life challenges that we have, and the software can make our lives better and make us work more efficiently. Okay, I'm not looking for over engineering bells and whistles that people never do use. Okay, um, can you add uh, a customer access to listen to the recorded calls? Uh, 
calls that they are paying for. Um, yes, the customers are going to have absolutely the customers are going to have access to uh, some really great graphs that show um, it's going to show a, a, a couple of things, a couple of line graphs, color graphs. It's going to show how many calls they got you know, during a particular day. And we'll do a week at a time and they can do it a month at a time, whatnot, but they can do it a, a, a billion cycle of time. They can see how many they answered, how many they missed. Um, and then they can also click on there and listen to the calls so they can understand what's going on there. Okay, so yeah, that 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 will be a feature there because that's really valuable, uh, especially when a customer is new and they're not quite sure whether there's real value in, in what you're offering. Yeah, you can't really offer uh, commissions on Elance. That's absolutely right, um, Keith. You're, you're totally right on that. Um, but you can... Um, offer bonuses and you could work something out from there um, on that end of it or you could offer to pay them more per hour for uh, higher performance work or something like that. You, you you can do some workarounds with it um, on that um, against their, their terms of agreements and can verify sales i I totally agree with you on that end of it. Um, I'm just saying that they, you don't have to do it that way, but there are workarounds with it, especially if you've got somebody in there, you know, they're a real salesperson and they're like, yeah, I got no problem doing that. Um, you know, pay me this, pay me the regular, and then I'll, uh, you know, if I get whatever an extra sales one in here, then I get an extra bonus or something like that. And that's, you, you, you can definitely work with that. Um, and I think it's important to have them incentivize and or they have, uh, some they're, they're, they're going to need some interview. They're, they're going to need a lot of references, a lot of five and four stars with people leaving comments about how they did the work and what they did. This is not a calling and up and just asking some information. They, they have to do some, they have to do a little bit of closing. Okay. Um, hi, uh, Chris, a question on the citation. Can you go over the process of how we get a citation to rank and do we use all of the fictitious information like the business name, address, et cetera? Um, yeah. Yes. So, so far, yes to everything. Yes to your question. Um, you want to fill out all the information. You'll notice that um, you'll have the, the places for, you know, you've probably all of you filled out citations before. But those of you have, you know, make sure you, you know, if they got a place for a photo, put a photo in there. If they've got a place for a video and you have a video, put a video in there. Um, it, you know, put the content in there. If, if you put a good, nice description in there, don't just go for, you know, two or three sentences and get it done quickly. Um, and do your categories correctly, do your tags correctly, do a title in there to make a little bit more keyword. And our experience with those, just like with the YouTube videos is, you know, you, you, you can, they're not sensitive like the sites. You, you can get pretty, pretty aggressive and kind of spammy with the links and stuff that you send out to them. And the reason is, is that, you know, you take something like a yellow pages or, um, a merchant circle and all the other, you know, top 40, 45 ones out there. Um, they've usually got literally millions of pages and you're just one of a million of pages in there. And usually their root, root domain is around a seven or higher, you know, six, seven, um, some of them a little bit higher. Uh, these are just, you're throwing like little specks of sand at this gigantic monstrous site with a few backlinks compared to doing the exact same kind of backlinking strategy to your brand new site with, you know, 17 total pages, including disclaimers and privacy acts and stuff. Eh, that doesn't quite look natural. Hope that makes sense. Okay. So Dennis asks on here, uh, would you say a theme blog network site is twice as good as a generic kind of business blog site? Uh, or is it really 10 times better? I don't know if I'd qualify it as, you know, 10 times better or twice as good. I, my experience has been that it is, that it is certainly better. If, if, if I had a choice only between two links, one came from kind of a generic uh, local kind of directory site. 
and the other one came from a blog that kind of you know that specialized and was of the same theme and everything else was equal i would go for the theme site but keep in mind that in the real world uh real sites get not just links from themed out sites they get them from all over the net okay so feel free to have a combination of those two they don't all need to be themed out Ah, this is a good question, and this is Ed. This is a good, great question, Ed, and this is something we've worked tirelessly, and we're about to deliver it out. And that is, uh, you know, how do you handle running out of phone numbers for Google authorship verification? It seems like Google only gives you ten verifications per phone number, which is pretty darn good, right? And, and I, I don't know what the number. I think it's eight or ten or something like that. And I think it's how quickly you do it, but yeah, whatever, six to ten verifications. So you could literally get 10 to 6 different um, Google um, authorships per one phone number. And you can, you know, you've, you've probably started to maybe uh, exhaust your resources like your spouse's or your girlfriend's phone numbers or your friend's phone numbers, stuff like this. I've got, we've got something that's so awesome. Um, we've got access to phone numbers um that you know you don't have to you, you can just we've got the interface done you can just go in the interface buy the phone number um and uh you can do all kinds of things with these phone numbers you you, you can get um you, you can pick what, what you want so you know i want a uh one in the seattle area so it's going to pick one area code from the seattle area you've got it um and they come with 30 minutes on it they are real landline numbers. They're not recycled numbers. And uh, you can do uh, Craigslist verifications with them. And you can also do um, um, verification with your um, Gmail account, too. So you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Uh, so we'll be, we actually have that ready. I just need to get it up and, and, just, and, just, and just push it out. It works. It's, there's no tweaks in it. I just need to get it out there. So we will have an option for that for you. And, and extremely inexpensive. We're not trying to make it a profit. We're trying to just offer it as a as another added benefit of being a, a valued customer here. So um, and I think those numbers are going to be around. Don't quote me on this yet, but I think it'll be around uh, uh, three bucks, which is if th there's other services who offer them out there, but they're like unreliable. You got to wait four or five days before you get it here. You probably get it instantly. Um, and they're using around six bucks or so. And we're just, we, we've got them for cost, I think three bucks. But you get them instantly and you can just order them online yourself. You don't have to go through a person to do it manually. But um, okay, so on here, uh, real estate websites. Do you know if they need, do you know if they need a realtor broker license to be presented on their site? I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not an attorney. I don't pretend to be one, but uh, just my layman uh, I guess would be yes, they do. Um, all right, Dennis. You're th yeah, you're welcome, Dennis. Okay, just going on good. And Doug asks on here, one quick question, which turbo plan do you buy to get the separate IP addresses? Um, I think I put the link in here. Let me just grab the links where I had them on an Excel sheet. Me, oh no, here they are. Um, I'll just throw all the links in here because uh, this first one is for the GoDaddy, or not the GoDaddy, the Go meeting tomorrow. I know a lot of you already signed up for that anyways. And some of the law firms and, and stuff there and also the exact package that's on there it's it, it's a special pricing uh, that, that only goes on for like another month or so then it goes up to $24 a month so now it's $7 a month um, and this this URL on here will take you directly to uh, the send all there we go all righty Yes, Mark, are you going to make the Saturday webinar bonus available to uh, the paper call members? Absolutely. All that stuff is always available to you guys. Um, and the link on there, if you want to attend, is on there. I just put in the chat box. I put all those links in there earlier. They'll be in the call, and they're all there, too. 
Um, and uh, I'll also make the replay available too. But if you've got questions you want to attend, I would attend. I think it's going to be, I'm going to go into a lot more depth and detail uh, than, than I have before and share some other stuff too. So we're going to get more in the nitty gritty of it. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, you know, how do you, you know, how do, how do you set up your site? What does the structure of your site look like? So we're going to go through that. Um, um, how do you, uh, how do you retheme your site? So what if you bought a site? What if you bought, I, I'd go for more like a generic. What if you bought like a generic, like someone's blog type site that wasn't really a strong theme either way. Um, and then what if you wanted to change that into a, a law site? How do you do that? I'll show you how to do that. And it's, it's, it's easy. Okay. Okay, Richard. Yeah, just send in your question. <coughs> so, so if you've got private blog network questions, just send them in to um, uh, webbyquestions at callzoo.com. The same place you'd send your questions here. Okay, that, that's all you got to do. Whoa. Okay. So, so David says he just got hit for $3,000 on here. Make sure that you check out, um, these guys right here and, uh, uh, I talked to this guy, uh, uh, Kelly's really good, really smart. Make sure that you read this over right here because on here, I mean, th th these, these are the guys that they're, they're like against the, 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 uh, trolls out there. So it is happening because they've got the software to do it. And this is really, really bad news. Um, and so we want to make, you know, we don't want to see other people uh, doing this on here, but um, on here, but he just says on here, and I, I, I definitely check this out. Uh, companies that send out a copyright infringement demand letters, uh, like all the other trolls, uh, he claims that the letters uh, that the recipients are guilty. So, so you got a one of for $3,000 on here, infringement and threatens litigation. It usually ends up in a settlement payment um, on here. And uh, last time I checked, it would be upon him, the other person, to prove these allegations. Um, but a lot of people are just, are, they're scared, they're uncertain, so they usually end up just paying it just to get it out, out just, to get, just to make it go away on here. And he's saying, no, definitely don't do that. Um, and definitely contact, uh, to, you read through this, you might want to check check out them. Kelly's really awesome. He's, uh, I've worked with him a couple, a couple of times. Uh, but, you know, he's not one of these, you're not going to get one of these 250, $400 type hour clients. Um, he's, he's just re really, really reasonable guy. So, uh, and very sorry to hear about that, Dave. Keep us posted on, on, uh, I'll keep you guys posted on what I'm learning about it. And some of you who are going to keep us posted, keep me posted as well so we can share it with the group. So we, so, you know, none of us have to go through this stuff. And it's an absolute baloney that, uh, you know, cause I'm sure David, you weren't out there, you know, purposely like swiping and stealing other people's stuff. Um, you're probably really shocked to, to, to get the letter. I'm sure it was something just insignificant. I was like, oh, geez, I can't believe they got that. But, you know, so, so we have to be prepared for that. And it's another thing too. It's, it's always, um, I, I've, I've had just overwhelming, uh, especially from the IM community, but overwhelming people just coming to me saying, uh, Chris, how can I set up my business for protection? And, uh, you know, whether I'm in the UK, um, whether, you know, wherever I'm in the world or, 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 or if I'm in the United States, can I, because my business is online, can I set up my corporations like you have in other countries? And then can I still live in the country that I want to? I don't want to travel around the world like, like, like what you're doing. And the answer is you absolutely positively can. And you can t save yourself a tremendous amount of money plus in taxes legally. And you can also, you know, fend off, you know, these kind of guys are not going to go after you. It's like, no, they're just not going to go after you. And, and the reason is, is because if you've got like a, you know, it's probably coming from the States and, uh, you know, you're a, that's coming, who, who infringed that was a Hong Kong corporation. So what are they going to do? Are they going to, you know, they can't practice law in Hong Kong, right? And if they go there and they want to charge you for some picture, which is just frivolous anyways, okay, um, and what little I know about the laws is it can be as, you know, if you, if it wasn't blatantly and intended, 
uh, then a, and it goes to court, then a judge can do something like a two hundred or a hundred dollar fine, hundred fifty dollar fine. But some of these guys are asking for three, four, eight, fifty thousand dollars. That's absurd. Okay, and uh, apparently per uh, infringement, uh, the the range can be a fine of up to from two hundred or one hundred fifty low end to thirty thousand high end. Uh, but what are they going to do? They're going to go after a company that is in, in in Hong Kong or Singapore? No, they're going to have they, they they're going to have so many expenses involved in that, and it's and it's then they, they they can't even they'll have to hire attorneys because they can't practice law there, um, and uh, you protect yourself and it's just it's it's really simple to do. We now live really in a world the world is getting smaller and smaller, uh, and then you don't have to travel around. The reason we travel around is because we want to travel around, but we travel around too. Uh, because um, then the then ninety four thousand ninety five thousand dollars about uh, that I pay myself and then I pay my wife is uh, almost hundred percent tax free legally um, and then um, and then our Hong Kong corporations and our, and our Singapore corporations they pay for everything for us they pay for moving expenses they pay for plane tickets and they have in almost every you know and, and we have accountants there so we have to file taxes there okay so that's you know it's not like the wild wild west or anything that has to be filed I'm very strict about that in hong kong by the way um but their corporations have just they have a laundry list of things that are deductible whereas in the states and in, and, and in the uk because they kind of both in the same kind of boat um their 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 list of deductible items are getting smaller and smaller and smaller so it just makes more sense and that and if i was living in the states uh, which you know we're not. My kids are now dual citizenships, and I'm working on my second citizenship and passport. Um, is uh, is 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 I would pay myself something just the bare minimum living cost, like maybe thirty thousand um, dollars, and then I would have my Hong Kong corporation I'd be an employee of that corporation, and you can do that legally and own it. It's perfectly fine to do that. This is not you know this is all above board with professionals, uh, you know, taking care of all the details of it to make sure that you're totally compliant with all the tax laws and stuff. Um, then the corporation can come in, the Hong Kong corporation or Singapore corporation can come in and, you know, they can pay for your rent and they can pay for, you know, your going out to meals and food and plane tickets and, uh, entertainment tickets, uh, for your dry cleaning, uh, for your new shoes, uh, maybe you needed to get your teeth whitened because that was part of being a professional thing. And these kind of things are not deductible in the States for corporations. Okay. Uh, but they are there. Okay. And then, and then you just keep the money, you can keep the money in the corporation. Uh, and you don't have to, you can, you can just prolong the taxes of it. And there's, you know, it's getting a little bit advanced there, but this kind of stuff where I start to see frivolous attorneys that are out there, like just worse than ambulance chasers. Okay. Uh, where they got software programmers that are going out there and finding and basically scraping the I forgot what it is, but the, you know pictures have got uh, got uh, identification stuff on it, and they can they they can literally just skim for that information and find it and just boom. Oh, did you know that this person over here stole your stuff and that we can do a you know you're probably entitled to fifty thousand dollars? Really? Yep. Go ahead and hire me. I'll, I'll hire you. You know, that's just, that's baloney. And what other kind of loopholes are they going to find? You know, it's just scary stuff. Um, alrighty. Need some black headers to nullify that AMLS chaser software. Absolutely. freaking lootly. Um, and then come in and just take those guys and just uh, do some uh, PR, some online PR with them because we already know their names and stuff and who they are. How do you find out if a domain has been penalized by AdWords? We will go over that tomorrow. Okay, you mentioned tomorrow that um, that the that tomorrow's paper call uh, ninjas. It's 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 a bonus webinar that I'm doing for people who purchased uh, a course on how to, some really cool stuff on how to do some three hundred one. Um, um, redirects and also um, how to build a blog network and they got some great resources uh, I'm sure you've seen it around it's like seven bucks or something it's totally worth it uh, they are missing some pieces in there 
uh, you know, not every course is perfect. So I was going to cover those missing pieces, plus go into some things that I just know you, a lot of you guys have been asking and just make it more complete. Um, and uh, but you, you have in in the um, I'll, I'll put the replay in the uh, members area and then you also have access to uh, sign up for it, too, if, if you want to attend tomorrow. Um, Show caller ID. Yes, Marco, we definitely show caller ID. You'll have an option to show caller ID or, or, or no call, caller ID. Call zoo feature. Be able to block spam or phone numbers. We we have that. And and I think we've taken it a step further. This is something that uh, it, it took a tremendous amount of effort on our programmers to do. But we did it, I don't know, it was four or five months ago. And basically what we do is we'll come in and uh, we we actually are now, we've got the programmers, programmers now that come in and they just will scrape all the numbers you guys enter in and they put it in one pot and then it gets shared among everybody. So there has been a dramatic decrease in the amount of spam calls, uh, but they keep, they're there and they're aggressive. So they keep coming up, but we can stay ahead of the curve. We'd greatly reduce them. We're up, we're up to like over 550, maybe even 600, um, known spam calls and they're and they're all on your account so you don't need to enter them in we, we do that on the back end for you and we'll continue to do that as we move forward and, and our list will continue to grow too okay and, and we'll also get smarter about it where i was talking about that with the program i was like can we can we create the system so it's more intelligent it's like if it sees a certain pattern of numbers and we have to figure out what that is a certain pattern of numbers it just automatically puts it on the block and the spam for everybody who's in the system. So, yep. Agreed, Marco. It needs to show the caller ID for, for real time, not after billing. I told, totally, excuse me, I totally agree with you on that. Um, how long would you recommend thinning out site links that are over optimized uh, on that end of it? Um, that's a tough one. And that's, um, Chris, uh, Harold. And, and, um, what, what I would do is, um, is we actually did a couple of these. We had, um, um, we've had a couple of sites that were totally over optimized and we, and we took as part of my case study, we took five brand new sites, um, I just, if you've got, uh, I figured most of you have seen it, but um, maybe not. Let me uh, let me just pull it up here. Uh, what is it here? Chris promises, and I think this is it. Yeah, right here. So, so if, you, you, you can go to this link later, uh, but it's just a video that I did, and it's a case study of five sites, um, and uh, and two of them were like they, they were one of these things where it's just like they were doing fine and then all of a sudden boom they're gone they're like nowhere to be found um and they were gone <laughs> they, you know they weren't on page 200 but they were de-indexed they were the you know so-called sandbag or whatever um and we took five uh five expired domains all you know mostly pr1 and twos so we had one pr3 and they were all over five years old uh, none of them were themed out. We themed them out, um, and uh, we sent the links out. And uh, within eight days, it went from nowhere. I mean, it, we couldn't find it in the first two hundred. I was like, okay, we're done, Logan. Um, and then it jumped up to page 40, 45. And I haven't updated it. That was that was on the fourteenth, and today's the seventeenth. We haven't checked them lately. We'll. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to check on, I got other things to do, but well, I'll have my team who's, who's, who's assigned to that. We'll check it on Monday, the stats. And, uh, I'm predicting that that one that was nowhere will now be up in the, uh, maybe three or two, but it's, it, but it, but it moved up quickly. We just five links. That's it. Five links. Okay. Um, and, uh, and I had some, you, you'll see some others on there. I did a little, a little 15 minute video, uh, uh, some that were, uh, kind of got pushed back from, you know, page one, back to page two, and just kind of stuck there. Five links, bam, literally within like six days, or like three days, they're on the bottom of page one. And then like, uh, day eight, they were in the top three, and some made it all the way to top one. And this is just doing the private blog networks, okay? So that's what I would suggest you do. And then, and then uh, on page, 
you want to go in and, and, and watch some of the uh, previous um, uh, webinars I did that, that are clearly marked uh, what, what it's about, about how to not over optimize the site and just and just see where you can not uh, maybe you've been over optimizing your title tags and your anchor text um, on your site. And then if you've been doing it off site with a lot of, you know, keywords, anchor text going to it, just stop that and just send in, you know, URL anchor text and uh, click here and, and just really broad terms. If you're trying to rank for plumber, then start sending in anchor text for, you know, drain removal. Uh, heater repair, uh, even air conditioning, stuff like this. Okay. All righty. Uh, yeah, Ron, I'll, I'll go. That's a that's a good question, but that's a uh, a blog network question. So we're kind of getting in there. Okay. Yes, add five links to one site. We didn't drip them out. Uh, they end up kind of naturally dripping themselves out over like every two days because we, we're also checking to see when they got indexed and cached. Um, but yeah, it's just five links. You know, we're not talking about 100. Talking five good quality links and, uh, you know, no nothing crazy. And it worked out just fine. Okay, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna kind of wrap this up here. I'm just kind of going through these. If the, uh, I'm, and a lot of these have to do with the private blog networks questions. So I'm gonna save these for tomorrow. Okay, good. Yeah, we 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 got the recording fixed for for last week. Uh, I, just, I just had a super weak internet connection. We were out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, we're back to strong internet now in, in Korea. But. Um, but I, I fixed that, so it, it kind of goes away around 46 minutes, and that's where I started the second video down below. So check it out. It's there. Uh, no, Doug, I, I don't have any links about showing how to set up an offshore LLC, but I'm going to put together some stuff. Cause I've had just, I literally have a, had like two or 300 people like in the IM community uh, asking this and I've had members here and stuff so uh, it's 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 something that everyone needs to at least be educated about so they know that they have choices and these aren't like radical things I mean it sounds radical right I'm gonna go open up a business in Hong Kong it's not <laughs> you know how many people I mean literally when I was when last time we were down in Hong Kong which oh, wasn't very long ago I was opening up my separate second separate corporation there and then I brought my in-laws down and we had a vacation out of it too and went to Disneyland down there and all that. It's a fantastic city. The city's amazing. I saw I saw more uh, Falcon uh, Rolls Royces than I've ever seen in one, one city ever uh, and all kinds of other Ferraris and all kinds of I mean, that place is just money. Um, and uh, it's not just Hong Kong money. There's The thing is, and, and they've got imports and exports just going in and out. Um, they've got so many foreign people coming in and planning their businesses there. I mean, this place is just like, they got the right idea. And unlike in America, you know, you open up a lemonade stand and the cops are going to come shut down two little girls for it. And then, you know, if they wanted to actually sell lemonade on the corner, it costs them over 300 bucks in most cities. And it would take three to six weeks to get it set up. That's the state we're in. You know what? You fly into Hong Kong, you get it up there, you're going to get set up. I never seen a system so freaking fast. And the government, you know what the government does? When you get done setting up your corporation, they will email you and they want to know how they did. And they are friendly and they are fast and they're just like, we want you here and we're going to streamline the process, baby. And that's just not, and everyone's going there. I mean, I just I ran, I mean, I just ran into Europeans, uh, people from all over Europe. I was one of the few Americans because we kind of isolated over there. But um, it's definitely something everyone should be aware of. It's super easy to do when you can uh, protect yourself from these a-holes out here that are, you know, after your your money and you're suing you and all that kind of crap. Alrighty, get through a couple of these. Bup, 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 bup. Yes, David Frenchman on here. It's yours. Some good questions on here. We'll we'll get we'll we'll get back to this here. I'm gonna wrap this up for now. 
I think we've got some good material here. We're going to get into blog networks tomorrow. We're going to go nice and deep with those. You've all got the links for those. Check them out on that end of it. Uh, appreciate your time on a Friday evening. Remember to serve first, earn more, and live more. Take care. Bye-bye. The organizer has ended the session, and this call will be disconnected.